The Ronald Reagan Presidential Library will host the second debate between most of the GOP presidential candidates tonight. Former President Trump is again skipping the debate and will instead speak with some auto workers in Michigan. Seven GOP presidential candidates are expected to take the debate stage tonight in California. That's right. And what's interesting is it isn't just the rest of us, right? Regular schmegular voters who are watching the debate stage, but Democratic campaigns are going to use what they see um, as they decide how to move forward um, and get votes for their candidates. For more on this, uh, the Democrats' the Democrats' view of tonight, we're joined by Amart Musa. He's the rapid response director for the Biden campaign, looking like you're already getting comfortable there in, in Simi Valley. Um, what will you be listening for specifically in tonight's debate? Hi, Manu. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, Where we're really excited, excited to watch this debate that's going to be a real showcase for the American people, whether it's in Michigan or tonight and on the debate stage here in Simi Valley of just the extremism from the Republican Party. And so what we're guaranteed to hear from Republican candidates tonight is a maganomics agenda that's focused on cutting taxes for the wealthy, slashing Social Security and Medicare, all on the backs of middle class families and shipping jobs overseas. And so that's what we're going to hear tonight, and I think we're, I think the American people are going to see more of, of what we saw in the first debate. Well, who do you view as the biggest threat to Biden that will be on the debate stage tonight? So are you going to use I mean, Mueller? whether it's Chris Christie, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Ron DeSantis, they're all really in the same bucket. And so, you know, Ron DeSantis, whether as governor or as a congressman, was cutting taxes for the wealthy, or Nikki Haley, who supports extending the Trump tax cuts, or Tim Scott, who is the architect of the Trump Trump tax cut scam that gifted trillions to, to the ultra-wealthy and corporations. So I think whoever comes out of the debate, whoever comes out of this primary, I think we're ready to take on next, next November. Isn't there some weakness among President Biden and his supporters, considering that most of the polls suggest a kind of neck-and-neck neck race between former President Trump and current President Biden. We know Trump won't be on the stage, but your campaign just shared its first attack ad against the former president, someone who just earlier this week, uh, a New York judge found guilty of misrepresenting um, the values of his properties. So how can a candidate carrying so much baggage be neck and neck with your guy, President Biden? Well, listen, I've, I've been on a couple of campaigns in my time, and I've learned to never take the polls really that seriously because they go up and down. I mean, I think what we've, we've seen in over 40 special elections just in the year of 2023 are dramatic overperformance from Democrats. We haven't, we're very clear-eyed about this election. It's going to be really tough, no matter who it is, because... There was, but there is a lot at stake. And so what we are going to focus on between now and next November is presenting our case to the American people, what President Biden has delivered, whether it's capping insulin costs, lowering prescription drug prices, bringing American jobs back here to back home, while Republicans are talking about banning abortion or cutting tax cuts cutting taxes for the wealthy. So I think we're going to focus on our message, not going to ride the polar coaster that much, and uh, we'll be ready for, for next November. All right, Amar Musa, thank you.